Hello again, glad to be back with you. Got a neat problem today in dynamics, and this one's on uh, braking force in vehicles. In particular, a little car. I've got a little car drawn here that looks kind of like a smart car, some little city car. Now, when you apply brakes on a car, you've all seen this or felt this, the nose of the car goes down. Well, what's going on is that there's a, an apparent transfer of weight as you apply the brakes. Now, the, there's no transfer of mass. The mass in the car isn't really moving. But the forces on the front and rear wheels, and particularly on the, the normal forces between the pavement on the front and rear wheels, do change. And one way you can see this is look at a motorcycle, particularly a high-performance motorcycle. Um, most of them have disc brakes on them, and the disc brake on the front is always larger than the one on the rear. Stands to reason it must be doing more work, and it is. The reason it's doing more work is that the force on the front wheel, normal to the ground, is higher than the force on the rear wheel. Well, it seems to, or stands to reason that basic dynamics ought to be able to account for that, and it does. So let's do that right now. Okay, so I've got this little car here, and it's a little city car, weighs 8,000 newtons, so a little less than a ton. And it's got a, it's decelerating at a rate of g over 4, so uh, 9.81 divided by 4 meters per second squared. Now, acceleration is that way because it's decelerating, it's slowing down. And so that means the force between the wheels and the pavement has to be that way as well, to my right. To my right, now to my left. Um, Normal force on the ground in the front is F1, and on the back is F2, and then, of course, the weight's coming down here. To make things simple, I put the center of gravity even uh, on the center between the two wheels. As I always do, there's the uh, uh, coordinate system I'm going to use here. Or was I do unless I've got a real good reason not to? Here there isn't, so we'll use the standard coordinate system. We need some dimensions, so I've decided that the weight, the, the distance between the uh, center of gravity in the front wheel is one meter and between the center of gravity and the rear wheels is one meter so there's L equals one meter and the, center, the height of the center of gravity is a half meter off the ground. These are all pretty typical numbers. Now given all that stuff let's find F1 and F2. Alright so here's how I'm going to progress. There's only acceleration in the X direction. There's no acceleration in the vertical direction and there's no rotational acceleration. So I'm going to do, write three equations of equilibrium or equations of motion. I'm going to write Newton's law in the x direction, and then the sum of the forces are going to be zero in the y direction, and the sum of the moments are going to be zero uh, about the center of gravity. All right? So let's go ahead and do that right now. Sum of the forces in the x direction is going to equal ma, and there's really only two forces in the x direction, the front uh, friction force on the front wheels and on the rear wheels. Now, I should point out, I'm drawing this car as if it's two-dimensional. Now, we all know there's another wheel behind this one and another wheel behind that one. What I'm doing is I'm uh, looking at the friction force acting really on both those wheels and both those wheels and kind of treating it as it's two-dimensional because I'm going to get the same answer and it makes the, the problem a little easier to work with. So anyway, uh, MA equals the, the friction force on the front wheel and the friction force on the rear wheel. Okay, now, Right, the way the problem is set up, I'm not going to figure out those two values directly. All right? I don't know what the coefficients of friction and all that kind of thing are. Um, and uh, I, it turns out I don't need to. I don't need to know F, F and FR individually to find F1 and F2. I just need to know what the sum of them is. So I'm going to do that. Now, M equals W over G, and A equals G over 4. So see, MA must be W over G times G over 4, and that's W over 4, all right? Well, it's just kind of handy, so I'm going to use that later. So there's equation number 1. Equation number 2, let's sum the forces. Let's try that again here. Let's sum the forces in the Y direction. Now, those really are going to be 0 because there's no acceleration in the vertical direction. The, the motion of the car is assumed to be strictly horizontal. It's not jumping up and down or anything crazy like that. So the sum of the forces in the vertical direction equals 0. Well, the vertical force is up, or F1 plus F2, and the force down is W. It's just the weight of the vehicle. And if we rearrange that, we find out that F1 plus F2 equals W. Well, that's not too hard to, to, to understand. That just means the normal force on the road has to equal the weight. Okay? And that's intuitive. All right, the last thing we need to know is the sum of the moments equals zero. Now, we have to find moments about some point. We can pick any point we want. 
if we pick the center of gravity right there, some things go to zero, and this is about as convenient a point as any. So let's do that. Moment about the center of gravity equals zero. So let's start doing this. F, F, and F, R, the friction forces due to the front and rear wheels contacting the road, are acting at a moment arm of H, which is going to be half a meter for us. And because they're trying to go this way, that's going to give us a positive moment. So I'm going to say H, F, F plus F, R. Okay. So there's the, those forces accounted for. Now what about the force on the front wheel? That's going to act the opposite direction. It's going to act clockwise. So according to this sign convention, that's going to be negative. Okay, so minus L, F1. Uh, the force on the rear wheel is going to do about the same thing, but it's going to uh, act in the opposite direction. So that's plus L, F2, and all that has to equal zero. Again, there's no motion. There's definitely no acceleration. So the sum of the moments has to be zero. Well, we already know that, let's see, FF plus FR equals MA, and MA equals W over 4. So that's going to be W over 4. Oops, let me try that again here. Okay, WH over 4 minus, okay, I can do this a couple of ways here. Let me do it this way. Plus F2 minus F1, and that equals 0. Right? So I'm getting closer. I've got, before I had three unknowns, I had, uh, let's see, F1, F2, and let's see, I had the sum of those two that I didn't know. Well, I took care of those two. I've only got F1 and F2, and I really do need to know both of those. Well, I've got an expression over here. Let's write this out as F2 equals W minus F1. Make that change. Substitute in there. So I'm going to get WH over 4 plus L. Now, anywhere I see F2, I'm just going to plug that expression in. So I'm going to get W minus F1 minus F1 equals 0. Well, if you look at this, I know what W is. That's given. H, that's given. L, that's given. W again. F1, F1, great. I've got one equation and one unknown. Now, I'm running short on time here, so rather than do all the algebra, I'll just write it out for you. F1 is 4,500 newtons. That means F2 has to be uh, 8,000 minus that. So F2 has to equal 3,500 newtons, okay? because F1 plus F2 equals W. So what we've done is assume, shown that assuming this relatively low acceleration, this is brisk, but it's not crushing. I mean, this is, this is very reasonable for a uh, city car. We've actually got uh, 1,000 newtons more normal force on the front wheel than on the rear wheel. Because there's more normal force, the vehicle can generate more friction force on the front. The front wheels are doing more uh, to help brake the car, right? That's why you feel that weight transfer forward. It's a, a due to the deceleration, and that's why the front brakes are generally bigger than the rear brakes. They're more useful. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.